2012 right now and New York City's final budget isn't due until the end of June, which means there is still a good chance, right, that some additional services could be restored, especially when it comes to the libraries. We talked about this a lot yesterday. Mayor Eric Adams alluded to it when he joined us on the Pick Up Morning News. Take a listen. This is the negotiation part of it. And, you know, the city council is going to come with their priorities. We're going to come with ours and we're going to get to a meeting where we're going to shake hands. And I'm looking forward to the conversation with the speaker. Uh, we understand the importance of libraries in our city. And this is really part of what this process is about. So as it stands, New York Public Libraries are facing nearly $60 million in cuts. That's a lot, which could force branches across the city to reduce their hours to five days a week. And that's only the beginning. Linda Johnson, president of the Brooklyn Public Library, is here with us now this morning to shed some light on who will end up paying the price for these cuts. So good morning to you, Linda. Thanks so much for being with us. Oh, well, good morning. Thank good you morning. for having me. Yes. So just so we're clear, there's three different library branches that serve the five boroughs, and they provide some really vital services to so many underserved communities. Can you kind of lay it out for us and how really how crucial and critical they are to our communities? Sure. So um, there are three library systems. In Brooklyn, we have 62 libraries, uh, one in every single neighborhood. and. All of the metrics uh, that we use to measure our success have been up over the last year. Card registration, we have a million card holders for people in Brooklyn. Also, they can take advantage of the services that we offer, which, you know, for new Americans, English as a second language has become critical this mm -hmm. year. Uh, for people who are trying to get jobs, who are, uh, who just want to sit down with a good book. Um, the library is a crucial part of very many people's lives. Yeah. So the libraries are closed on Sundays now, and that's really in part of last year's $24 million budget cut, right? So if this round were to go through as it stands without any money coming back, there's this idea of having to reduce to five days a week. Is that accurate? That's exactly right. And it's not just ours. Um, when the doors are closed, it means there are programs that cannot be offered because they're not open. Um, and also, uh, we've cut back on material spending, meaning we're not buying as many books, mm -hmm. meaning that people have to wait longer mm -hmm. uh, when books are on hold. Um, it, it affects so much of what we do that uh, just talking about a day a week, um, which is dire, doesn't mm -hmm. really tell the whole story. Yeah, I mean, and we keep hearing this word, endowment, that there are endowments that can help the different branches. But does that go to all the branches? And is that actually... Um, so there, as I said, there are three different systems. Brooklyn does have an endowment, um, not a large one, but the endowment f funds are restricted. They're there for specific purposes. It wouldn't even be legal for us to spend our endowment money on general operating. What is it used for then? Um, specific programs for the most part, and then there's an amount from the endowment that is spent every year as part of our operating funds. It's the, um, it's the, uh, it's a percentage of uh, the investment. Mm -hmm. So really, it's, that doesn't even put a dent in your expenses. No, it does not. And, and of course, if you were to spend it all now to make up for this um, mm -hmm. budget cut, then you'd have nothing, and you'd have no money in years ahead that we use to augment the budget. And that's anymore. your. And that's and that's in Brooklyn. Queens of course, doesn't have an Queens endowment. Queens doesn't have an oh. endowment, and uh, and the money that's in this uh, endowment for New York Public Library. Um, is governed exactly the way ours is. So let's talk about what happens now, right? So obviously, the mayor said yesterday that this is a negotiating tactic, and he's pretty much said that this is going to go back and forth now between the city council, what comes and what goes. What can you do? Do you go in front of the city council and say, hey, here's what we need to do? Yes. we're. I mean, we've been in this process since March, um, and we have several hearings that um, we will um, testify in in city council. There's one coming up uh, in in May, um, we lobby hard, um, both the mayor uh, and the administration, as well as city council. Right now, we have a postcard um, initiative going on where we're just flooding everybody, uh, all the elected officials in Brooklyn, with messages about how vital the services are that the libraries are it, offering and what's at stake. What is the straw that would break the camel's back, right? So if you were it's $60 million in the chopping block right now, did you need all of that to keep the six days a week service? We do. And in fact, you know, that would just keep us on par with where we were last year, mm -hmm. which truthfully is tantamount to a cut because it's so much more expensive to do business this year than it was last year. So really to to be operating as we would like, we, we should be getting an increase. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so, so like you're saying, even if everything was restored, right. you're still we're struggling, still really to, struggling keep to keep up. 
That's that, correct. So what do you do then if, we, if, if not only it doesn't get restored? What what do you have? What will you do to move forward? Well, if we, if it's not restored, we'll have to make the drastic cuts yeah. that Dan was talking about. You know, mm -hmm. five day a week service, um, and and that's I, I hate to even contemplate it because it really does impact people's lives in a material way. Could it be worse than that? Is what I'm basically um, asking. No, I think that that would be the most dire mm -hmm. situation. I hope. Um, uh, I'm always one to be optimistic, mm -hmm. but. You know, we also raise private money, and but it's really, it really is a responsibility and an obligation of the city. Yeah. Well, Linda, keep us posted on on what's going on with those negotiations, the talks with the city council. We're very interested in this. Vit libraries are vital yes. to so many Huge. families, to students, uh, young ones who go there for some activities during the day. People air that conditioning. Don't have wi exactly. You know? So no. many different. So facets. many different things. I will just say, you know, we are the largest provider of free Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. If you're on the wrong side of the digital divide, it's not good. Exactly. Linda, keep us posted. All right, great to have you here this morning. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah.